Hi guys, welcome to another Learn Electronics Repair video. And this one, I'm going to revisit something I did a couple of months or so ago. And that was the amazing $1 short finder. So this was a very simple device using an LM317 and a resistor. And a multimeter in volts or millivolts range. And basically, this can find very low resistances, and it's very useful for short circuit tracing. But it doesn't actually measure the resistance. What it measures is the voltage between the two points. And the way we use this to find shorts is by finding the lowest resistance. I made two videos with this, one the original design and then another follow-up talking about the fact it is actually safe to use this on circuits that are powered by low voltages such as GPUs and CPUs and I demonstrated that as well. So basically what this can do, I'll just very briefly show you on a, a GPU. This one has a short circuit a DR MOS chip down here in four phases. And this will find the short circuit phase and to do that we'll put it onto millivolts because we need quite a bit of sensitivity so we can use the little amazing one dollar short finder on this as an example and find out which of the phases has a short so i'll connect to ground the connection to ground and we'll measure on each of the coils so here we are reading 10.76 i mean there are some capacitors charging just let it settle down a little bit so we get a steady reading. Yeah, it's about 10.7, 10.6. This is reading about 10.3, a little bit lower. This was about 10.2, a little bit lower again. And this is actually the bad one. And we're reading about 10.1. So you, you can see this very simple device can find short circuits or trace where they are much more accurately than just a multimeter can on ohms range in actual fact the resolution of this which is 0 0.001 millivolts is equivalent of 20 micro ohms so that's the resolution of this meter in actual fact and you've just seen it working very well the video where I demonstrated this has about 100,000 views. And I have to say, it's my most, or well, one of my most viewed videos ever. And we were all happy with that. And then two things kind of happened at once. One is that PCBWay offered to sponsor the channel a couple of videos a month working on electronic projects for test equipment. You know, I said, that's great because that suits what we're doing here. And the great thing with PCBWay is myself or others, and I'll just show you, can upload projects, share projects. And then the rest of you, if you want to buy the PCB, you just click on PCBWay, you buy the project, and the person uploaded, being the channel, myself or anybody else, gets a 10% commission. So it's a nice little bit of money without you having to invest in buying your own PCBs and selling them. And I think that's great. So that was the first thing that came along, which I'll just show you that. And then the second thing that came along at about the same time that made me want to revisit this. This is PCBWay.com. This is where you can all share projects and make a commission from anything that you design and share. And you can see in the shared project section, there's lots and lots of categories view all categories and you'll find there's many 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 categories you can put your projects in so i'm going to be putting these projects in here and this is where you can if you want to build them buy the pcb so this i thought was great and this came along we have on the discord server a section now for designing and building projects and pcb way i've offered to sponsor us so they will provide us with free uh, PCBs, prototype PCBs while we're doing that work. And we have that for 12 months. So if you want to be involved with that, that's great. At about the same time, this guy came along. Now, I want to show you his little YouTube channel, uh, Detlef Amend. He's a, a German guy. 
and he contacted me and said, hey Rich, I was intrigued by your design of the, of the little short circuit finder. And I was so intrigued, I actually made a PCB and I've upgraded your version a little bit. And he offered to send me one, which he has done. And I'll just show you now what we have here, which is effectively the $1 short finder Mark II. So this is uh, Deathlef's version of the short finder. It's surface mount, it's very small. It's USB powered. And then we have on now an on off switch. And we have another switch which selects the current range. And the original one had a current of 50 milliamps. This is switchable between 50, 8 and 1. Uh, he said he wanted to make it 50, 10 and 1, but using standard value resistors, the closest he could get was 8. But that's fine. So this is the little USB powered version. We plug the USB in here. We connect from the red and black to the meter probes. And then we have our little short finder running from a USB power supply. So we'll have a look at that. And we'll give it a try. But the other great thing is, he basically gave me the files for making this. And said I could do with this design as I wish. If I want to make a, a version or publish this for the channel to raise a little bit of, um, if you like. A little bit of money if anybody wants to buy these I will get the 10% commission so that's the way I would make a bit of money from this but that money will go into running the channel and I'll put this onto PCB Way's site as a shared project so I'm going to do that shortly we can do that on this video and of course we can try this as well and see how well it works first so that was the second thing that happened and I'm, you know, I will say, by the way, guys, since I've been running the YouTube channels as I started, I honestly thought that other YouTube creators in the same sort of area, electronics and electronics repair, would be very competitive people and wanting to keep their subscribers to themselves. Thank you very much. And I found, you know, the opposite to be absolutely the case, that... They're a very friendly bunch of people who are very happy to help anybody else who's doing a similar thing to them for the main part. And I was just surprised at, at that community that we have. So thank you, uh, Detlef, for sending me this. And um, as I promised, I've shown the guys where to find you guys. If you want to hit subscribe on this channel, help him along. It's a German language channel, but you can put subtitles on and then click auto translate to English, which I did. And you can understand what he's doing. He's building little projects like this. And talking of very nice guys out there, there's another one, um, a guy named Carlos, who has a little channel called Retro Repair. So let's just nip over there and I'll explain to you how Carlos then got involved with this. And what we're going to do is a step three of the $1 short finder. This is Carlos' website, uh, Retro Upgrade. He actually lives very close to me, five kilometers away, something like that, up into the mountains. And you can see Carlos is making videos about retro games consoles and similar things, and in particular, 3D printing. So I uh, gave Carlos a call and said, would you like to work with me on this project? And this is what we came up with. I thought it would be nice to expand again on Detlef's work. And with the assistance of Carlos, make a battery powered version of this, where the PCB that fits onto the battery holder, basically, has two sockets where you can attach um, a meter probe in particular, what's called a Kelvin probe, which I'll show you in a moment. And then this would fit to the back of your multimeter and you can effectively connect the thing and use it. To do that, we needed a way to mount this. And this is where Carlos comes into the project. He's doing some designs and 3D printing to make a suitable enclosure that can fit to the back of a multimeter. And once we have that, 
that whole project again is going to be uploaded onto PCBWay website where you will then be able to order not only the PCBs but also the 3D printed enclosure as well for the whole project if you want to do that. But the prototype for that is going to be built on VeroBoard which I'm also going to do in this video. So uh, if you want to do it the ghetto way, I can show you how to do that for VeroBoard as well. So the version we were talking about and the way it would connect with multimeter, let me show you what I've got in mind. This is a Kelvin probe. If you buy a micro ohm meter, these are what will come with it. But you can actually buy these very cheaply on aliexpress you can buy the kelvin probes for just a few euros so my idea was to take the kelvin probe we attach one red and one black to the meter it doesn't matter which ones and then underneath we have the little battery pack and a version of this with the sockets on which will come out so then the other two sockets will plug underneath you have your range switch. It doesn't need an on-off switch because when the probes are not connected or they're not touching each other or you're not probing the circuit, in actual fact there is no current draw, there's no current path. So it will not take any power from the batteries until you use it. And when you stop using it, it's not taking any power from the batteries unless you happen to leave the leads clipped together. And then it will, you know drain your batteries at the rate of 50 milliamps, 8 milliamps or 1 milliamp depending on what you set the current to. So that's what we're going to make and that's going to be if you like the, the final version we think but at the same time I'm going to upload these files as well if anybody just wants to make this. This you could easily attach to a meter probe connecting your USB and then you just have one wire to the probe and one wire to the other probe. So that that will be there as well. So whichever one you want to build, if you do want to build one, or you just want to build the original ghetto version, all the options will be there for you. Okay, so that's enough chatting about that. I think the first thing to do forwards now is to test this. So let's see whether this works as well as this did. So here we have it then. Um, powered from the um, USB, a little green LED on this one, it's a nice little touch. And this is your current range. I'm pretty sure this is the 50 milliamps and then eight and then one. So let's try this one. So we'll go on to the ground again. Same as the other one. Let's have a look at the various coils. So that's really 9.6. 9 Similar. similar yeah 9.19 so that's definitely finding it so it works the same as the one I designed on the 50 milliamp range let's go to the 8 milliamps range and let's see what this does so again we'll get onto our circuit we have 1.75 1.74 similar Similar, slightly higher. Yeah, and lower. So it works on that range. So there's just one other range, and this is the one milliamp range. I'm interested to see if it actually work at this range on this circuit. Let's see. Again, it's reading lower, 0 0.22. 0 0.22. Point two two. Will you see any difference? Uh, it looks like at this current, it's not enough to to determine the difference. But again, I guess that will depend on the nature of the short circuit we're trying to trace. But certainly on the fifty and the eight, it works as well as the one I made and it has the advantage of the other current ranges so we can get on and um, load this PCB up now onto PCB way and 
get some uh, prototypes made and if that's okay then we can put this as a shared project and, and you're all uh, welcome to buy them this then is the schematic for this little surface mount one you can have a look it's quite simple we have the same basic design with the LM317 a surface mount one and the various resistors he's put in so we've got 1.2k 120 ohms and then he's used 27 and 33 together to get around 50 milliamps so they're in parallel i actually used a 22 on my original version but i did say it was a little bit more than 50 milliamps he's done this a bit more accurately than i have so 25 ohms 120 ohms and 1k2 and he just switches those with the switch basically which connects as you can see to the actual lm317 from here to here and this is the out this is the in so it's a very simple device thank you Detlef, for uh, crediting me yeah this is where my, my idea was first published okay so what we need to do now is to upload these gerber files onto pcbways website and they can now start making us some pcbs here we also have the uh, bill of materials this is basically the parts list but you only need to upload this if you want somebody to manufacture them for you we have the gerber files now these are the actual files that effectively define the layout for the pcb and we can have a look at these if we go to pcb way they have a gerber viewer and we can use that to have a look at the gerber files for our pcb We'll just search for a free Gerber viewer and there's the PCB way online Gerber viewer. So here now I can actually upload the files and it says I can upload the zip file. So I've not tried this before. Let's see what actually happens. I think somewhere here is short finder Gerber. Let's open the file. Well, let's see. Oh, and there it is. Yeah, straight away. So there is our. PCB so we can see what it looks like it's marking the value of the resistors here you can see so we can now upload this file to PCB way and they will then check it out to see if they're okay we can order some prototypes or we can create the shared project so this is how you would upload your own projects to PCB way and then get paid every time somebody wants to use that PCB we go to PCB instant quote standard PCB and then we don't have to go through all the settings here we can actually upload the Gerber file so I'm logged in on my account previously I've been ordering PCBs from the shared projects things we can build or we can modify they're all open source so this is the first time I've tried to upload my own so let's give it a go so if we go to quick order PCBs and we go to add Gerber file and we choose the Gerber open that then it look it's detected the board two layers is detected the size for it it was successful so now we can calculate the price and the price is uh, five dollars for the PCBs that's a quantity of five so you get five of those and I can now save it to the cart you have a number of options for shipping uh, they I normally use this one because the shipping is very slow to the Canary Islands normally so if I use this ship and it actually arrives quite quickly it's actually saying it will be on the 15th of June which is a couple of days away from when they're shipping them it will arrive on the 20th of June which is 
from today, seven days. Okay, so we now just save that to the court cart. <laughs> I should say it's now in my cart together with some other things that I've already ordered and I can now pay for my shipment and they will turn up. Well, I have to say that went really, really easy. It's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Order the PCB from a Gerber file and you can see just how simple it was. I just uploaded the zip file of the Gerber and it filled everything in for me. I didn't have to do anything. So they're on the way. Uh, this obviously works. Uh, as soon as I get the uh, PCBs here in a couple of weeks, and um, I can just build another one up to make sure they're good, then you'll be able to order this as a shared project from PCBWay. Um, let me know if you're interested in ordering them as complete built units, or if you just want to put your own parts on there. I do have that option to upload this with a bill of material, so PCBWay could assemble them. Although, for something as small and simple as this, it's probably cheaper just to build them yourself. I mean, you know, because you're doing that amount of work. Okay, so that's a nice little addition, I think. But let's have a look at the other version I had in mind, the one that fits to the multimeter and uses the Kelvin probes. Let's draw our circuit then. So this is based on the original version which I made and the upgraded one which Detlef made is a kind of an in-between of the two. So this is our LM317, this is pin 3, which is in, and this goes to our, our battery pack. So this is the batteries, we're going to use three AAA batteries or AA batteries. That's our battery pack, okay. Positive. The negative end of the battery pack quite literally goes to the black probe of the Kelvin probe okay that's where it goes to then we have the out pin which is pin 2 of the arm 317 and we have the adjust pin which is pin 1 and the adjust pin connects to the out pin and this is where the resistors and the switch go so we have a switch in here with three outputs and this is where we put the resistors that we want to be able to switch so the first one I'm actually going to use a 22 ohm resistor which was on my original design rather than a 27 and a 330 in parallel which Detlef used his gives a more accurate 50 milliamps mine I think was about 57 but use whichever I'm just being a bit more lazy than he was being on this prototype version but I suspect on the PCB we'll do it the way he did it. Uh, this is the second resistor. This is 120 ohms. And this is the third resistor. And this is 1.2K. And this basically gives us around 50 milliamps, or about 57 I think on mine. This gives us around 8 milliamps. And this gives us one milliamp. So that's the switchable current. And then the red meter probe connects from here. And the current we select is the current passing between the two. Okay. Now you'll notice, as I mentioned, there's no connection between the probes in the circuit. So this will draw no power. It doesn't require an on-off switch on the battery for that reason, which makes it simpler to make, just the one switch rather than the two. So what I'll do now is put together this on a bit of Vero board. I'll fit some 4mm sockets here for the Kelvin probes. I'll try and find a battery holder. I might end up just soldering some wires onto some just to build the thing up. And let's see how well this version works. We have what we need, I think. A couple bits of uh, Vero board. I only had a two battery holder, not a three battery holder. But I've got a third battery, so I'm going to solder some wires to this one and fix it to the board. That's fine for the prototype. We have a uh, LM317, or rather this one's a KA317, which is an equivalent. We have uh, three resistors. We have a 22 ohm. Oh, 
120 ohm and 1.2k. We have a couple of uh, four mil banana sockets as they are called and we have a switch salvage from something, a three way switch. So that's basically what we need. The three way switch has, and they quite often weighed out this way. This pin is the common pin. So if I just take my meter on uh, resistance range or just continuity even. Yeah, I'll do. If I connect to, to this uh, pin, the third one in, and in the middle position, it will be connected to the, the next pin to it. Okay, so that is effectively position two. If we go to this end, we can call this position one. And we now have a connection from this pin to this end. No longer to here, so now it's here. And if we go the other way from this pin, we have a connection to here but not to the other two yeah so that's our common pin and then we have the three pins so this is where we can attach our three resistors the common pin can then go to the adjust and the other three end of the three resistors all together can go to the out on the lm 7 so the first thing we'll do let's get started is let's attach our batteries the lm 317 can go here this panel can go up the front basically and on here we can mount the switch and the, the, the two sockets that's how I'm going to do it so the first thing I'll do is solder a couple of stiff wires to this battery attach it to the board and then wire it up the this one effectively just goes to the black terminal on there and this one will go to the in on the LM317 which is pin 3 so let's do that bit first Okay, so I have the battery holder. I've uh, attached a couple wires to the battery and lost the bit of recording when I did it, which is really annoying. But basically, it's very simple. You just scrape a little bit away at the cap with the, a Stanley knife or something similar. And then you'll find the solder very easily. And they do it very quickly. And I can take this one back off again, you'll see. So they actually solder on very easily, yeah. So just to get it, you want a little bit of uh, flux. I use this one, the uh, Amtec NC559ASM. I'm not sure the stuff I use is original, because I don't know what's supposed to be original these days and what isn't. But I get maybe five of these for about 10 euros or something from AliExpress. And I've used them for a couple of years and they work absolutely fine. So much so, I'm actually on the second batch now. So... I'll just try and stand the uh, battery up against something, keep it in place. This is obviously going to go disastrously wrong. Let's find some way to hold our battery without me going to the effort of getting the vice out, which is what, of course, I should have done in the first place, and I'll probably end up doing in the end. <laughs> just showing, you know, cutting corners isn't always the way, yeah. Uh, just get the tools and do the job properly. Okay, let's get out a bit of stiff wire, which I've removed just to show you how to do it. Go to the battery. And it's on. And they solder easily without getting, there's no heat going to the battery as such. And it'll work fine. Okay, there's our battery. Let's now attach the battery holder to the PCB with a bit of double-sided sticky, I think and put our battery actually on the PCB, yeah? And then we can start connecting this up. Here's a bit of a double-sided gooey stuff. I don't know what it's called. It came off a roll like this. I need to buy some more of it. So, first of all, we can just attach our battery back here somewhere. Our battery pack, yeah, it's stuck well enough. And then we have a positive here, negative, positive, the other end okay so yeah i can see so positive there it goes negative to positive this is the negative where the wire is attached and we're going to go from that point to the positive of this battery and then the negative is going to end up down at the uh, bottom let's see if we have it in the right place yeah that's fine so 
the black wire will go to here and then that'll be our negative coming out from that end not positive okay so let's stick out a battery on the very board so this is quite old stuff i need to order some more this is the last of what i have so probably a little bit of flux would have helped actually but let's see so there we go So we have our three batteries. Uh, this one can go down in between to connect to the positive of that one. So just uh, figure out how much of it we need. Not a lot. Should do the job. Okay, so we have the battery in the LM317 fitted. I'll just now connect the positive from the battery to pin three of the LM317. And then the other red lead can go from um, pin one to the switch. Okay, that's most of what we need here. We also need the connection from pin two to go to our resistors. And I think I'll mount the resistors to the switch itself, it'll be easiest. So we just need to tag one more wire on here to go to the resistors. I have a piece of white wire that'll do the job nicely. So let's tag this on to pin two of our LM317. Okay, there we have it. So that's all we need from here. And the rest of this can be mounted on the actual front panel. So here's our front panel. This is gonna be fitted on here, which we can do by putting some wires through here, basically soldering it back to it. So what we need to do now is drill the front panel to fit our connectors on, and also our switch. There's a front panel then put together. So I can now mount the front panel onto the battery holder, the base part. And the easiest way to do this is to put some stiff wires through a few of the holes in here and just solder them down. I'll just uh, use the legs off some of these 22 ohm resistors again. I've got hundreds of these things for nothing at an amateur radio for years ago. And the serve lots of purposes either as resistors or stiff bits of wire for various projects they're ideal for this so uh, we can ask one or two to sacrifice themselves for this purpose or just you know leave so much on i can still use the resistor so there's uh, one rather stiff bit of wire take another one which we're going to use in this project anyway we don't need all the leads on it so again i could just uh, Cleans up a little bit. Stick this into here. Should be fine. Bit of solder. I mean, you, you could put more of these. You'd have three of them, four of them, however many you want, really, to make it as secure as you like. Just uh, level that up a little bit. There we go. In fact, yeah, let's have another one. We've got enough to go at here. Again, I'll just. Uh, straighten the wire up a little bit and this is also just getting some of the tarnish off it a little bit yeah, I can go in there somewhere okay so this should hold our project together quite nicely and then it's just a matter of wiring up the resistors and the, the sockets basically so we can bend these uh, down and then this will fit onto here Right, nicely, just get into some holes, there we go. 
Yep, there we go. Now if I solder these back to here, if I hold this all to one piece for us, just do a bit of solder in there. Okay. These are not for electrical connections, these are just for physical mounting points basically. Doesn't matter about that bit of solder on there because there's no connection on the next track anyway. In fact, I'll just hold to help to hold this a bit more securely. Okay, so that'll do for our prototype. And if this is working, then we can uh, get a PCB and the uh, 3D printed enclosure ready. Once we know it works, and it should do. Okay, take those off there. So the next thing to do now then is just to wire these up. So the black wire just goes to the black terminal. That's easy to do. So uh, we can just hold that away. Uh, we'll just take one of the batteries out first if we like, but no current can flow anyway until we put the probes on. Uh, we can... I find this, by the way, if you're doing this, it's often works better backwards, yeah. When you're stripping away, hold it that way. I don't know why, but it often strips the wire better. So we can just uh, stick this down the uh, hole. There we go. Bend it over. Fine. Sold that one on there. From whichever side I want to. Okay, so that's the negative, and then the positive one goes to the probe, and then goes to the switching contact on the switch. So with this one, we want to uh, put it somewhere here. Yeah, this is what I meant about this. When you strip the wire that way, it can be quite hard to get it to come off. I mean, I did get it to come off, but yeah, try this way, and it. You see what I mean? Comments below, yeah? Why does it work better that way? Or if you haven't tried it, try it. And then tell me if it actually works better that way. And then tell me why it works better that way. Okay, so we can uh, stick this into here. Again, just a little bit. Uh, find something just to push the wire out of the way. Back again. Should do it. There we go. Got it. Okay, bit of solder on that one. Okay. So this one goes to the switching contact, which is this one. And then we have to attach our three resistors. We connect all of the resistors together and the other end goes to the white wire, which goes back to pin two. So this one's coming from pin one on our LM317. Let's try my technique again. So just hold the wire, go backwards. Yeah. These are like tricks I've learned. I don't know if other people use them or not. I mean, maybe, maybe everybody does it that way. I, mean, I didn't for a while. It took me a while to find out it was a better way. I don't know, or whether it's just something I've worked out. I think like it seems like intuitive that you use it the other way round, that way, or maybe it doesn't. Okay, so that's on there. So we now have our three resistors. So the first one we can put, uh, let's see which way we want it. Yeah, we'll have it like it's like 1, 8, 50, yeah, milliamps. So probably just want a little bit of flux on this actually just to uh, get a good solder joint onto it. As we know, this is a prototype, so it's not particularly important how it loops. It's more, does it work? Yeah, yeah that's attached well. That's one resistor. Then we want the uh, 
120 ohms which is this one and this is the 1.2k so uh, brown red brown is 120 we can cut this a lot shorter and put it near to the switch which to be quite honest what I should have done with the other one I'll probably <laughs> take it off and redo it now I've thought about it so it's a bit of a solder it's running away with me okay see if we can just get on here otherwise I'll put a bit of flux nope now I've bridged it to the wire it would have made sense wouldn't it really to put them on in order it would have made sense to put a bit of flux on in the first place. This is where you realise, you know, you're cutting corners and you shouldn't have done. Look at that. Much easier. Okay, let's put them on in order from this end and work back and then we can not kind of like tying ourselves in knots, yeah? So we've cut this one fairly short. This is one of these jobs, guys. I don't know why. When I'm doing this sort of thing, it's fine. When I'm doing it on camera, it's not fine. <laughs> And I can't really understand why that is. Yeah, that's on there. That's the first one. Let's stick the second one on. Much easier, okay? Let's uh, make a slightly neater job of it. And let's shorten this one a little bit as well. Okay. Put a bit of a uh, solder on it. Okay, get a little bit of flux on it. Okay, right. Put it on here now. In fact, no. Let's put the wire on first. Let's work it. Let's go across in order. There's the wire. Okay. Now we put this resistor on. Okay. Okay, they're all on, we can quite tidy, and now we need to just bring all three of these together, move the red wire out of the way, all these three together, we can wrap them around here, and then we can tag on our white wire, and we have our prototype already, so we'll tag them on two on there, just wrap them around, and while I'm at it, might as well... Uh, Shall we do it the same way we did before? Strip it backwards. Okay. Yeah. That's working reliably, don't you think? Strike that on there as well. And then it's a bit messy, but I'm sure we can get some solder on this lot and just stick it all together. There. That's all fine, yeah? So there's our prototype ready to go. Apart from just chopping a couple bits of uh, excess wire off and putting the battery back in. Well, that's it, guys. Let's uh, get our meter, let's get our Kelvin probe, and let's get the same PCB we were testing with before, and let's see how well this works. So we can now take our Kelvin probes, and then I realise, of course, that they won't actually fit into the sockets on here. Uh, but I'm sure I can just um, uh, find some way to just clip a crop with our clip lead on for now. I can find some of the sockets that these will fit into, which would be a much better idea. But anyway, for now, we'll just take some crock with our clip leads on. At least that will test whether this is going to work or not. Let's give this a go. We'll click the uh, crocodile clip on, and I can clip this to the uh, black probe. Okay. I'm sure you know you find these things happen when you're doing stuff like this, and it's, you just have to uh, work around them. After all, isn't that the whole idea of prototyping this? At least now, before we do the PCB version, we know the type of sockets we need to be fitting. Okay, that should do the job for now. So that's that. We have the Kelvin probes. If I switch the meter on now, I should read for yeah, 4.3 volts. If we connect these together, it should go to zero. So that appears to be working. I'll switch the switch to the 50 milliamp. Does it change the voltage? It shouldn't do because there's no load connected. Okay. Let's get our 
board that we were testing before, which is this one. And let's see if this is working with the Calvin probes. Okay, so we've got our board to test with. We have the Kelvin probes now. So let's see if this works as well or better than using the improvised probes we used previously. So we have here 9.46. Make a good connection onto the ground. 9 9.45. 9 9.43. 9 9.40. So it definitely reads lower and it reads more stable with the Kelvin probes than it did with the improvised ones. Okay, let's now try on the middle range. So again, we'll go to ground, we'll go to the first coil. And this is really 1.916, 1 1.88 lower. 1.88 a bit lower. What's this really? One point eight seven, yeah, reading that bit lower again. So it's definitely working. I want to try the one milliamp range with the Kelvin probes and see whether it will read. So we have about two point two, let's just let it settle, two point one three, two point one two. Sorry, 0 0.2. 0 0.213, one oh, it's a little bit lower. Yeah. Yeah, it seems the Kelvin probes actually give this a little bit more resolution. And even on the lowest range, I'm actually reading lower on the phase, which has the short. So that's definitely successful. And I do know that I can just could just prove this that there's no current flowing when I have these open. In fact, I don't need to. I've seen the circuit. You've seen the circuit. There's no current flowing when they're open. So that's our little prototype working. Albeit we had the wrong sort of sockets, but we can deal with that. So now I'm going to pass you guys over to Carlos, who's going to show you how he modifies the schematic for the PCB, or rather maybe the layout to fit the sockets on, and then how he would do the uh, 3D printing for the final project. Okay, Carlos, over to you, mate. Thanks a lot, Richard. My name is Carlos. I run the YouTube channel called Retro Upgrade. Welcome all. I'm going to be showing my modification to Detlef's uh, $1 short finder schematic. I made some minor changes, but his design is really nice, so don't dis discount it. If you want to use the short finder without batteries and just a USB power supply, his design is better. Now on to the design. Uh, let's look at my design files first. So I made it in easy EDA. I know it's sacrilege. I'm using GLC PCB <laughs> to make a PCB way video, but fine. <laughs> I don't have any other tools. Here's my design. Let's start with the schematic. So I simplified the schematic. Uh, that left was using a lot of nets and jumps. Uh, it makes the schematics look a lot nicer visually, but it's a lot harder to read for some people. So I made them simplified. The wires go exactly where they go. So you just follow the wire and the dots and you know exactly where to go. These are the power pads that go directly to the batteries. Uh, plus and minus. You have a, a minus and plus. The minus goes directly to the output. That's why it doesn't draw any current while it's not connected to anything. The second one goes exactly like the design Richard made. It goes into a LM317 and then the sense pin goes back through the resistor net and you have the switch here. 
so it chooses what resistors to use so it gets uh, the sense back and the other other wire uh, the output goes directly to the output here it's exactly the same I put the capacitor here in between just like that left uh, design and uh, it's just to mitigate the spikes when you connect it to power uh, batteries usually don't have that issue but it's better to be safe than sorry and you can leave it out if you want it still works now on to the PCB design there's where all the differences I made new parts just to be able to place them I made these parts they are a new part you just make a pad and these make a circular pad with a hole in, in the middle uh, so let's go over to the PCB so it looks ca quite confusing so we can close down all the layers and I, we can go layer by layer okay and we need this is the outline or where, where the board is going to be cut this is the top layer which should have all the components on these are the positive and negative pads we also are missing the through hole pads but these ones I have one via that goes from here to here and this is the LM317 I'll put up the silk screen as well so you can see where everything goes the switch goes here all the resistor net is here we have the LM317 I minimize the space needed but i still made it bigger than deadlifts because we need some bulk we're going to mount the pcb with the banana contacts where we needed some beefier pcb so it doesn't break under the strain the batteries go soldered here this is the positive this is the negative i don't know why the positive symbol is underneath but it wasn't there before let's fix that so, there we go now there there's not much to this there the back side is made with a flood fill so it fills all the empty space with the ground plane it only doesn't fill the little via the, that's underneath and then Fine. Uh, lastly, I'm using a silk screen for the backside. So me and uh, Richard decided to put our logos on. So we did that. Uh, you can't see it right now, but I'm going to rotate the view so you can see it in the moment. And these, all these, are not used in my design. I used the auto router first, but didn't work. Here you can see the, all the sizes. In between the bow folds, it's 42.5 millimeters. If you want to do a custom enclosure, so you have the sizes. And the entire PCB is 52.9. Uh, I would have made it an even number, but it's really hard to move stuff here when you have it in place. And the height is 13.8 millimeters. These are just the distances, so you, if you want to be able to access the switch from the front. I went another direction with my design. Uh, you will see it in the 3D pr print design instead. Uh, let's see. So let's go over to the 2D view. We decided we were going to make it red for a reason you will notice pretty soon. And it looks pretty nice. Uh, not too bad. Uh, it looks, uh, looks good enough to use. And then the bottom side here are the logos. This is the reason we, why we chose red. So Richard's logo looks nice. Okay, so let's go to the 3D view. Not really necessary, but looks really nice with all the components on. As you can see here, everything fits, should be easy enough to solder. If you buy it pre-assembled, I don't think they can fit the LM317 for you but the rest should be able to put be put on in place by a pick and place machine so the switch the resistors and the capacitor it's not hard to do by hand either okay let's go over to the 3d print part 
so let's go to fusion i have it open right here here's the 3d design as you can see it's a little box it holds everything you need it's actually way over engineered for what we need it has a small lead to keep the batteries in i left it open on top of the pcb and the plugs i wanted to reach the switch with my fingers and uh, the only way i saw possible was with a really long stick and a hole here in front or a sliding switch from the top down but both of them can fail at any moment so it wasn't really worth closing this area up we uh, decided on a few plugs uh, so i designed them in just to make sure everything fits nice and snugly and we left open channels here so the battery connectors can slide through we have these battery spaces uh, for the battery connectors and just you can just run a wire on the top because there's a lot of space left i did it thicker behind because uh, if you want really thick batteries it'll still work but uh, for now i just designed it for aaa and uh, aa so as you can see it has a clamp underneath the clamp works by putting a rubber band around this this area and you can just pull them apart and the rubber band will keep the tension and the sliding parts are angled so it can't fall out easily and it, this should give you about 10 centimeters of holding power and it's about yeah uh, five or six centimeters from side to side to clamp on at a minimum distance so if you have a really small multimeter this maybe doesn't work six centimeters so i had to make a choice of how small mini the minimum size was and that should be okay for most multimeters I did it in four parts, two equal parts. These parts are exactly the same. Now let's start removing stuff so you can see underneath. Now this is a, a separate part, the back, uh, let's say bracket to hold the sliding parts for the clamp. I made it this way so you can ch choose which, one, which way you want the clamps if you want them here or if you want them here because if you take this part out you can slide it in from the other side instead it's a sliding part let's remove the case so you can see it it's a little u shape so it just it's like a little clip now let's remove the clip as well and the plugs and the pcb so we're just left with the case the batteries should should fit snugly the connectors should also fit uh, quite well i modeled them after the this uh, the schematics for it or the design files from uh, aliexpress i see this performing very well uh, you shouldn't be able to break it too easily it's still quite thick uh, for being a 3d print the print took about four and a half hours to print it i know it sounds like a long time but it's a lot of pieces and uh, i print slow slowly so i get better quality you could do this in half the time i guess with a good 3d printer now let's go and see the 3d printed parts Okay, so this is a small time lapse and before the smart Alex say that my 3D printer needs calibration, I know it was just very late last night. And as you can see, it went really smoothly otherwise. The color is really nice. It's called emerald green, but I would call it PCB green instead because it's closer to that. The phone ran out of batteries when I was doing the time lapse, but it finished without any issues. The pieces were really stuck down. It was almost impossible to get them out without a spatula. I'm using a, one of my spatulas I usually use. I, I've sped up the video 500%, so I'm just showing off the pieces. 
I usually use tape because my 3D printer came with a sticky base uh, that's on top of a aluminium base, but my printer came with an issue from the factory, so the head smashed right down to the aluminium and destroyed the bottom layer. I'm going going to get a magnetic base or a, a glass one, but I haven't had the time or the money for it yet. YouTube is still not paying me anything, so. Okay, so you see it's really stuck there, but it printed really nicely. It doesn't have any real issues. Here I do some sanding and test fitting of the parts. You shouldn't be forced to do this if you buy the stuff from PCBWay. They have a lot better printers than I do. But some light sanding with a file or something usually removes everything. Anyways, this, the parts look amazing. Uh, it's really shiny and bright. The supports make it look ugly, but when they're gone, it's really nice. I used three supports and a 0.2 layer height. It's not too bad. It went really fast to print. Uh, considering the size usually a print this big usually has some blemishes uh, or issues uh, but this turned out great don't mind the tape <laughs> it, it got really stuck it was really hard to get off i actually had to use water at the end just to get off this last pieces anyways uh, we'll fast forward here at uh, 5x speed and see how it turns out at the end I'll test fit everything and show you this is speed up quite a lot at 600% or so it's kind of boring just watching people take supports off I think except if you're an ASMR fan but I don't have any audio here so <laughs> unlucky uh, the lid needs a latch in the front as well I noticed it's too loose and the tracks are a little tight so I need to redesign a little less of a overhang when printing but I, I already did all these changes so you shouldn't be affected if you buy the parts or at least download it to print it yourself now the skirt supports I used to make it stick to the bed I don't think they're necessary and they made cleanup a lot harder but why would you risk it uh, failing the print just for a little extra work? Still here I'm sanding off the little feet because they need to slide in quite easily but it's really stuck so I need to sand some more. This segment is getting really long so it's time to end it. So I jump to when it, this is done. Okay, so it's done now. I'm just going to put a rubber band. I don't have the right size. I need a smaller one, but I'm just going to wrap it around and see if it works. I'm just trying around a few <laughs> configurations here. And uh, I found that if you just spin it around around the knob and all uh, over the entire meter, it should work fine. There we go. I'm trying it out off camera and you see it springs back. My multimeter is extremely thick compared to others so it doesn't sit quite as good as I would want it to. It fell off a few times. Okay I think I'm done here. So thank you Richard for having me and back to you for the end of the video. Bye! Thank you Carlos! As you can see guys, Carlos and myself have quite different skills, but very much the same interests. And as we happen to live very close to each other, I'm sure we will be working on more collaborations in the future. Especially because PCBWay are actually sponsoring us now for 12 months. If any of you guys are interested in getting involved in any of these sort of projects, then please come over to the uh, Discord server, Learning Electronics Repair Discord. And we have a section there where you can get involved in designing and making these little devices. If you just want to upload some of your work yourself to PCBWay into the shared project section on your own account, great, because you'll also get yourself 10% commission on any PCBs or designs that people order.
Okay, so to end this one, we have a little prototype. We have some uh, PCBs coming from Quality Design, uh, which PCB Way very kindly made a few special editions in red and gold and also black and gold. So they'll be here soon. We can make up one more prototype from Carlos Design. As, as you can see, that will clamp to the back of your multimeter. So you have a little device on the back of your multimeter with two extra sockets, and you can now connect a Kelvin probe and find short circuits to your heart's content. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you all soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.